Since the end of the Korean War, North Korea has not participated in other major conflicts but has systematically sought opportunities to sell weapons and provide other military assistance to countries friendly to Pyongyang, and the war in Ukraine has no exception. According to the New York Times, North Korea sent pilots to help North Vietnam during the Vietnam War. Its pilots also flew to help Egypt during the 1937 Yom Kippur War and North Korean missile technicians and two small units of troops fought on the side of the Assad regime during the 2016 war in Syria. It was a pattern that when North Korea sold weapons to warring countries, it sent its personnel there not only to help these countries use the weapons, but often to fight themselves. It seems they don't like to miss out on opportunities to take part in a war and gain experience, said Yang Wook, a military expert at the Asan Institute for Policy Studies in Seoul. According to him, if Pyongyang does send ground troops to Ukraine, it will be their first major war in decades, an opportunity for their officers to get an example of how modern warfare is conducted, including with the use of drones. According to the expert, the DPRK will study how the knowledge gained in Ukraine can be applied in the Korean theater of military operations. Russia's use of North Korean-made KN-23 ballistic missiles is also one such experiment. Yang Mujin, president of the University of North Korean Studies in Seoul, says that by using them on the battlefield, North Korea will gather valuable data to improve the effectiveness of its missiles, data that it can also use to sell missiles to foreign buyers. The missiles could also become a key weapon used by Kim Jong-un's forces if Pyongyang attacks Seoul. According to South Korean analysts, Pyongyang's main personal contribution to Russia's war against Ukraine could be engineers and weapons advisors who will help the Russian military operate weapons, identify defects, and collect data on their use on the battlefield. At the same time, they noted that a considerable number of North Korean artillery shells and missiles are faulty. At the same time, some analysts doubt that North Korea will soon deploy large numbers of troops in Russia's war against Ukraine. Among them is Pak Wangon, a political scientist at South Korea's Yuha Women's University. Such an operation requires careful preparation on both sides, similar to the annual military exercises that South Korea and the United States conduct. North Korea has been supplying Russia with weapons for its war against Ukraine for months. In particular, these are KN-23 ballistic missiles, which Russia has repeatedly used to strike Ukrainian cities. In addition, a certain contingent of North Korean engineers is located in the occupied territories of Ukraine. But recently, there have been rumors that the North Korea may send troops to Russia to participate in the war. The media wrote that Russia created a Buryat battalion of North Korean troops, and the first North Korean soldiers have already fled. 18 North Korean soldiers fled from positions on the border of the Bryansk and Kursk regions of Russia, a few kilometers from the border with Ukraine. Russia poses a direct military threat to Germany. An armed clash is possible by 2030, according to Bruno Kahl, head of Germany's Federal Intelligence Service. The Russian armed forces should be able to strike at NATO by the end of this decade at the latest, Kahl says at a hearing at the Bundestag's Parliamentary Oversight Committee. According to him, the Kremlin views the West and Germany in particular as an enemy. Germany is the second largest supporter of Ukraine. The chances are high that NATO will invoke its mutual defense clause at some point, Karl adds. Putin is seeking to expand the Kremlin's sphere of influence in Europe and push U.S. military forces off the continent as U.S. defense spending exceeds that of the European Union, the intelligence chief says. We are in a confrontation with Russia, Karl says, adding that Vladimir Putin is not just concerned with Ukraine but creating a new world order. Karl's assessment is in line with other European officials who see Russia as a more ominous threat after a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius warned this year that Russia could attack the NATO alliance within five to eight years. According to all international military experts, we should assume that Russia will be able to launch a military attack on a NATO state or a neighboring state from 2029, Pistorius says. The EU's candidate for the bloc's first ever defense commissioner, Andreas Kubilius, echoed this prediction, saying the region needs to build up its military forces for a possible confrontation with Russia in six to eight years. After the war in Ukraine broke out, Western countries began to worry that Russia might invade NATO territory. Alliance officials have so far rejected this possibility, saying they do not see such a threat shortly.
President Volodymyr Zelensky has previously stated that the Baltic states, Poland or the Balkans could be the next targets of Russian aggression. In addition, NATO has already developed a defense plan in case of a possible Russian attack. At the same time, the military bloc still wants to strengthen its capabilities. The Israeli military on Wednesday released a video it claimed to show strikes on Hezbollah sites and militants in southern Lebanon. The footage also showed what the army claimed to be a Hezbollah weapons stockpile. The army said in a statement that the forces located two storage facilities in a civilian area containing a large number of weapons including shells, cornet missiles, numerous at, three Sagar missiles, and over 100 mortars. For the past two weeks, Israel was pursuing a ground incursion into Lebanon against the Lebanese militant group of Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. Hezbollah began firing rockets into Israel on October 8 in solidarity with the Palestinian militant group Hamas, following their surprise attack on southern Israel. Almost one year of low-level fighting has turned into all-out war and displaced some 1.2 million people in Lebanon. בית, בית של אזרחים, ולמטה מחסן אמל"ח גדול.